Hey everyone, so welcome to my latest experiment. Those of you who follow me know that I have been sort of playing with Replay.io and its capabilities. And some of you may know me as a big Cypress guy. So I decided to utilize these two things and try to explore how I can use Replay to make my flaky tests a little bit more stable. Now, I of course will be using Cypress for that, but I may move into Playwright in the future and maybe combine both of them uh, because both can be flaky. My goal is to dive deeper into code and understand different sources of flakiness, whether that is the application code or the test code. The whole project can be found on GitHub. Uh, there's a link down below and you can check it out and examine this with me. So in today's example, we are going to be taking a look at a button that performs a certain action, but then the whole page throws an error. And the reason for that will be that the page is not really ready, but we are going to examine why that page is not ready. And Replay is going to help us with that. So let's dive in. Okay, so here I am in my VS Code, and you can see that in this test, we're trying to add a product to a cart. So we visit our page and we wait for one second. And funnily enough, this part of code is here because the test is already flaky. So what we want to do is to find a button that has the text add to cart, click on it, and then confirm that the item was added into the cart by seeing this message, product added to cart. So let's now take a look at our test and you can already see that this Test is kind of flaky, so let me run that again, see if it passes. It has failed, maybe on the retry it will pass. And we are so lucky that it has. But the bottom line is that the test is flaky and we need to make it more stable. And you can see that even that one second wait is maybe not enough. Now what we might be tempted to do is to increase that wait to be more sure. But if you have ever written a Cypress test, you know it almost hurts, it almost feels like a surrender if you add that weight. So let's try to find a way how we can not add it into our test. Now I was so lucky to be able to reproduce this locally, but the more annoying part is when your test runs locally and it runs okay, but then on CI it doesn't work. So this is what happened on my CI as well. But luckily I had my replay recording enabled, so we can now debug what is actually happening. If you don't know what Replay is or you are curious about how to set it up, I have linked a video down below where I explain all of that. So now I'm going to skip that part and jump right into Replay. So here I have my recording and we can see that we have failed attempt number one, failed attempt number two, and then finally we were able to pass the test. So let's take a look at number one where we can see that we have a failing API call, but also we have an assertion that was not passing. If I click on that assertion, I will get the same information that I would get in Cypress. So I see the snapshot of my page and I can also see the state before and after. Now this is the part where it becomes interesting because if we take a look at our assertion, we can see that these sneakers are not available and our counter over here shows number zero. But if we click on the after snapshot, we can see that they have become available and we see the number one over here. But we see a message that we have failed to add the products into cart. So when we go back and examine this network request, we can open the dev tools and take a look at what was happening with this one. So in the middle, we can see the spec, but we're now going to focus on the right part where the network calls are. So I have focused the add to cart and in this bottom panel, we can take a look at the headers and also the response and request. So if we take a look at the request, we can see that the quantity was zero. So our application was actually trying to add zero elements to the cart, which might give us a clue of what's going wrong. If we take a look at the response, we just get the 400. So that's some generic error. And usually with most of the APIs, we would get some more information, but as we know, that might not always be the case. So this can actually be quite realistic. All right, so now we know that our application is not sending the proper data. 
The only thing we need to find out is why is that happening? If we take a look at some other API calls that our application is doing, we might see this API check availability. Now, this is a GET request, and this is going to give us information on whether the product we are looking at is available and what the quantity is. So this is a pretty good clue into what is happening. While the page is loading, we might need to wait for this one in order to click the button at the right point. So if we go back to our test, we can add a intercept and match our request. So let's give it an alias of available. And then instead of waiting for one second, we're going to wait for that endpoint. So if I save my test now and go back to my test, maybe run it a couple of times, I can now see that the test is pretty stable. So even though the get endpoint might take a little while, we are still able to add our product into our cart. And while this is doing a good job of stabilizing our test, it's not really the best solution for stabilizing our application. The main reason for that is, is that our user might have a slow connection and they might encounter the same error. So they would click on the add to cart button and it would do nothing for them or it would throw an error. So let's go back to replay and try to see if we can prevent this error. Now this add to cart button is a component. So we can take a look into what this component is actually doing and see if we can spot any errors. So I can see that the add to cart button is in our source code and this button is actually taking some props. So we might need to take a look one level above. So let's take a look for example at product detail and on this page we can actually see most of what is going on in our page. Here we have our fetch API check availability. So this is the API call we have just intercepted. And our application is actually using data from this endpoint and setting up the availability and the quantity. If we scroll down, we can see that the quantity is being fed into this quantity control parameter. And then our add to cart button is doing the add to cart action when we click on it. So when that happens, the add to cart button is going to create a post request to the API add to cart. And it's going to use that quantity as the parameter. So let's add a print statement and let's follow this quantity. If I add this and open my console, I can see that the number is zero. So this is exactly what we see in the HTTP request. The quantity is set to zero. So this is what happens in our failed test. Now, if I go back to my Cypress tests and pick out the successful one, I can now see that the same print statement is actually giving me number one. So we have narrowed down the error. Now, what can we do with that information? You can see here inside the code that we are using the use state, which defaults to zero. And it will change once we get the response from the data. So if we want to make our application stable, both for our test and for our users, we should prevent our users from clicking add to cart button when the information is not fully loaded. So let's go back to VS Code. I'm going to open the product detail component and I'm going to use this quantity state and pass it into add to cart button. Now what I want to do is to add a disabled property that will be true or false based on the quantity. We of course need to set this into add to cart button. So we'll add a property that's called disabled, which will be a boolean. And then we add it to our button component. So we'll destructure the disabled property and then set it up based on this. I'm also going to set a style to this. So if the button is disabled, let's set the opacity to 50%. I'll save this now. And when I go back to my test, I can actually see the opacity turning on. Now this means that in our test, we don't need the intercept anymore 
because the application is going to take care of that state for us. So when I now save my test, even without the intercept, our test is still going to be passing. And that is because Cypress will not click on a disabled element, but will wait for it to actually be enabled. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. See you everyone in the next video.